Hi, my name is Suzanne McDowell, President and CEO of Circle of One Marketing. Welcome to In the Circle with Suzanne, my bi-weekly podcast where I get to talk about whatever I want to with whoever I want to. So I've been gone for the whole summer. It's been a super busy summer. You know, this show is a lot. It's a lot to get all this done. And um, so I, I had to take a break. I needed a break. But I had an eventful summer. We did. I went and saw my baby girl, Sydney, in New York. Hi, Sid. And I went and saw my building, my 12,000 square foot building that I purchased in North Carolina from my new company, Lion Sea Properties. And then I had my birthday party. And then you know what happened the day after my birthday party? The whole world changed. And Kamala Harris became our savior. So I wanted to talk about the fact that the future is now female and it is official. I feel like it's official. And to that end, I wanted to introduce <laughs> my Miami-Dade County Mayor, Daniela Levine Cava, who I think I'm possibly outside of your you know, friends and family, probably your number one fan, like right, <laughs> right under your parents and your kids and all your best friends, right under there, right, right under there. So anyway, welcome. Suzanne, I'm so excited to be with you. I follow you around. You have a lot of fun. And I, I'm sorry I missed the birthday. It's but, okay. uh, you know, next year. It's okay. You went last year. I mean, you did a pretty That's good right. job last That's year. Right. You guys, last year, you know what she did? She came to my birthday party, gave me a proclamation, and then to the stunning of all of fabulous Black Miami, broke out in the Martin Luther King version of Happy Birthday to Ya. <laughs> that is that mayor. So okay. I'm your big fan. <laughs> Thanks. So you. it's also Black Business Month, and I know you have a big Black Business Month initiative. We're going to get to that, but we're going to start from, like I always do, just like this. Start from the beginning. Tell me all about it. <laughs> <laughs> So the day I was born. Exactly. I was born and then what happened? <laughs> so, you know, they have a thing they ask in a parent training program I created one time. Not parent training, parent leadership training. Mm -hmm. And they ask you to imagine your birth and who was in the room when you were born, maybe literally and figuratively, mm -hmm. and what were their expectations. Mm -hmm. It's a very profound little ex exercise. And for some people the expect expectations were nil. People wow. expected that they would never succeed or be productive or happy. I mean, really, they were born into circumstances like that. Mm -hmm. For me, I was born into a loving circle of friends and family who expected me to excel. To soar. And that was kind of my yeah. background, yeah. that it was always... Ex excuse me, but assumed I do well yeah, in I school understand. and all of that good and stuff. I was asking you if you're going to college, hurry up and pick a major. Hurry up and pick a college <laughs> and a major. Get going. That's right. And when I was elected county commissioner, my dad was like, eh, what's that? <laughs> oh, my God. You sure your dad's not a Nigerian? <laughs> Even the Nigerians are super serious about education. Yeah, yeah. So. No, unfortunately, my father passed from COVID. Oh uh, after so he moved mom. here for a little while. Oh, I'm so sorry. My mom sorry. died of COVID. Oh, oh my God. Listen. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Yeah. <sighs> well, I know you don't want me to start at the end, but I did come into office as mayor right in the height I, of the of pandemic. I remember. And working so hard to do everything possible to help people stay healthy, mm -hmm. make sure that we were taking care of them. And to my amazement, we emerged from this pandemic, the strongest economy in the country, really, the most recovered. Uh, yeah. Uh, but to just go back to the beginning, because that's what you asked. Please. Start from the beginning, please. <laughs> so I had a very wonderful childhood. Mm -hmm. um, not all harmony. I mean, there was definitely discord in my family. My parents I mean, did end up getting divorced. Yeah. <clears throat> but I was the oldest of three. And uh, we lived and I was born in New York City. We lived in suburbs. Then we started moving around. I lived in Canada. Brazil, Chile, oh, wow. uh, with my dad's business. We were moving around on his company, Was had operations around the world. Uh -huh. He was traveling everywhere. In fact, he spent a lot of time in Africa. Oh, wow. I didn't get to go to Africa with him, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he would tell us about it and bring us lots of uh -huh. uh, telltale wonderful yeah, gifts course, and all course. that and met some of his wonderful friends and business associates in, in New York. And um, so I kind of got the travel bug, and I also saw the world. So I, was I understood say, yeah. just that kind of rounding out of That's right. being able to normalize 
differences almost. You yes. know what I mean? Like, I know you and I have the same concern, yeah. Yeah. whether you're in Japan or Brazil or Miami. Yes, that is so very true. At that time, none of my friends, look, I'm 68. None of my friends were traveling um, anywhere, much mm -hmm. less overseas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, it really put into perspective that the United States was not the only place in the world, not even the most important place in the world, that people had other experiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it widened my horizons. It also taught me to be very adaptable. Mm, yeah, like water. Be like water. Be liquid. Stay liquid. So I got to make new friends. I got to reinvent myself Adapt, a few times. Pivot. So it was a very, very broadening experience for me. And then we were back in New York, uh, and I did my high school there. And then Where'd you go to high college, school? Midwood High School in Brooklyn, New York. All right. Which, really fascinating, was mm -hmm. where my dad had gone to high school really? so after traveling all over the world so he had been in private business mm -hmm. but he decided to do uh, a stint in the public sector so he was in working for the city of new york under mayor lindsay mm -hmm. he was deputy uh, economic development administrator and he was developing brooklyn downtown brooklyn wow. and flatbush avenue anybody familiar with it got my daughter major... lives in crown heights I, okay and my son lived it. in crown heights yes. so many generations of uh, my family <laughs> also and uh, my dad had grown up in brooklyn so mm -hmm. he was back home and so okay girl yeah so <laughs> so he did his little few years in the city government while i was in high school there so uh, then so you really you like came, around. like all this stuff is because, you know, one of the things we always mm -hmm. talk about on the show, with all of my guests is that kind of like the, the layering of your ancestors mm. that you don't even realize that now you're the mayor of, you know, Miami Dade County, which is, you know, massive. And your dad, how many years ago was in public yeah. service? I mean, yes. you're coming by it. Yes. Naturally. Well, and like all of us, we're very much a product of our nature and nurture. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad was in business, which. I was never in private sector business, so that part I didn't have. But I it's was a so social, <laughs> but I was a social entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. I really started a lot of nonprofits and figured out how to make them mm -hmm. work. But also, he was very interested politically. So he was active in uh, party, like Democratic yeah, Party politics, when he party. was in college yeah. and very active in local politics. My mom was a social worker. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of, mm -hmm. I got from both of, them both of them yeah. and uh, put them together, got master's degree in social work as well as my JD law mm -hmm. school and uh, kind of live out those two perspectives, those two disciplines and everything I do. Well, I know you come from some prestigious uh, Ivy League schools. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. tell me about mm -hmm. that. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I did go to Yale, Yale. as an undergraduate <gasps> and I had a I really had an amazing experience there, I do have to say. And um, among other things, I was elected student council president. So mm -hmm. that was my last elected office until I was 59. <laughs> uh, so I guess 60, until I was 60. And uh, then I also um, ran our Big Brother Big Sisters program at college. Mm, yeah. And I had a little sister. Oh, you had know. a little. I had, a little, I had a little, so I ran that program. So I was very involved in, on both sides, uh, as well as I, I did get a degree. I majored in that psychology. Part, that part. Yeah, yeah, I did get, I did the get words. the degree. Yeah, <laughs> and um, then I went on. I took a year off, a gap year, if you will, and then went on to graduate school in law school and in social work. I did a combined degree. Mm -hmm. So I at put those Columbia? degrees together at Columbia, Columbia, Columbia University. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Listen, I, um, you know, I always sometimes I channel like an mm. a older Jewish man and I'm like, what could be bad? Yale and <laughs> Columbia, what could be bad? Well, uh, that your parents must have been so proud of you. Well, they were. They yeah. always they were. But again, expectations, like expectations you know, yeah. were what they were. So but yes, they were they were proud. And I, I do have to say that. Um, it was another fantastic experience getting those two degrees. Um, look, I lacked really for nothing. My father made a good salary. Um, my parents, as I said, did go through a divorce. So obviously that changed things a bit. But they didn't divorce until I was in college. Mm -hmm. So I had a rather... A rather traditional a life. home life, you yes, life. and all the travel and the experiences. The other thing that I did that was very, well, I did many things that made a big impression, but one thing was my dad was a big hiker. Mm. 
So oh. he's very into the outdoors. Oh, yes. When you were at the bank, you talked about yes. that. Yes. So we hiked every weekend. Oh, that's nice. And everywhere that we lived, we hiked. Mm -hmm. And so I love being in nature and I love hiking. I love walking in, in the woods. We didn't do rock climbing and things like that. And he didn't like to backpack because he liked to sleep in a comfortable bed. Mm -hmm. So we were, <laughs> it was like, day hikes, day hikes. Exactly. But I, that was my whole childhood. And um, that was very formative as well. And plus my mom, even though she went back to graduate school when I was in high school, so she uh, wasn't working mm -hmm. officially until after that, she did do some some work, but it was always social work related. So yeah. she would bring children home. We In Brazil, when we lived in Brazil, she created a, a group for little girls who lived in the favela, in the slum. Mm, yeah, that, and she would bring them person. home and teach them sewing so they would have an opportunity oh for my God, a different that's a kind great of profession. Yes. And it really will change your cast. That's right. It will completely change that's your exactly cast. That's exactly right. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Oh so, my God, that's awesome. Some early experiences. And also, I worked always. I started, uh, I was working for money in the summers starting at uh, age 15. So I had a lot of great summer jobs mm -hmm. and some, you know, routine. But like I worked one summer as a mother's helper to make money to buy a guitar. I a worked mother's helper. Oh, I heard about that. Where you just kind of go to somebody's house and hang out well, with their kids. Yeah, it, was, exactly it, it wasn't that easy. Uh, let's be clear. <laughs> <laughs> Little hellions they were. <laughs> I got you, yeah. So yeah, I did have to take care of these little children, I heard about but that. it was a great experience. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they lived in the in the country. So like, I left the city. Actually, I guess this could tell something about me. I put an ad in a magazine, mm -hmm. uh, Saturday Evening Post, I think, which was the magazine, and. Uh, saying I was available to be a mother's helper. And then this family in Connecticut responded. Oh, nice. <laughs> so that's how I got that job. Remember uh -huh. those days when you put ads in the paper? Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess they probably do now, but anyway, it's not Not story. much. Classified in the Miami Herald is two pages, if that. Yeah, I remember. So I know I look. Thing. So I, you know, that, and I worked in parks and I told stories. I did a lot of things with mm -hmm. kids as well. Uh, and um, and then during my, my college years, I worked, well, I worked in Puerto Rico at a bank mm -hmm. in Ponce. I worked, um, gosh, all the things I did. I worked in Washington for the Department of Education mm -hmm. and on a teacher exchange program. And then the following summer, I, I worked in England mm -hmm. for the company that I had met in the exchange. And so, uh, what else did I do? You did a lot of stuff. I did a, I did a lot of stuff. <laughs> and then basically I worked with, I call it every dysfunction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I worked with homeless and people with mental illness wow. and homeless people and uh, immigrants and, you know, every people in public housing who yeah. were getting evicted. So a whole range of things that people were really experiencing mm -hmm. great challenges or they had issues that they needed help with. Um, I, those were my experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, you tried to solve those problems. I, I did. And I got a very broad look at uh, the range of challenges and how to how to solve them. But I was always dedicated to children. To children. To make sure children could get a good foundation mm -hmm. and uh, be loved and uh, happy and productive. And to have what you have. What exactly you right. That's exactly, exactly my motivation. Yeah. If I had been able to have a you know good life and be well cared for every child certainly but you know a lot of people aren't like that a lot of people would mm. just have gone and taken the bmw and gone to you know the <laughs> poke whatever the hamptons or whatever mm, but it yeah. really says a lot which is one of the reasons that i am your biggest fan you know after your friends and family um <laughs> is because you're so humble but obviously clearly aware of of your power but humble in it mm. and you're mm. always grateful Always grateful, always grateful. And, you know, I'm so glad we got to have this talk because now I understand more about all of you. Like, you're such a well-rounded mm -hmm. human being. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I just... Well, I will say this, too. I, people say, and I, I love this, that I'm a mayor for everyone. And yes, that yeah. warms my heart because that is really how I feel. Because people are possessive. Of you. <laughs> well, the, but even if, for example, they see me doing something that's supportive of their community or their concerns, mm -hmm. they know that I'm also caring for some other community and yeah, those concerns. Yeah, that you're everywhere. And, that, um, and so for me, it's just a, a, such a, it's a joy and it's um, constantly inspiring mm -hmm. to be able to be in different communities. I'll, I'll say, for example, in my fundraising, my 
team tells me, I've had a fundraiser specifically with the Asian community, mm -hmm. specifically with the African community, mm -hmm. with the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the communities yeah. that make up South Florida. Yes. Yeah. And not they're not all typically involved in, in, no, in the, the same I mean, way. The, I mean, the Asian population is like three percent in, in Miami-Dade County, maybe two to three. Well, you know, of course, we have the Asian population includes Oh, Pacific Island, yeah, and and India, and India. Mm. you know what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. it's it's so a it's bigger, than... it's bigger. I don't know the exact percentage number, yeah. but also like if you look at the Caribbean, so many in the Caribbean yes, I know have people. those roots mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So uh, and you know what's interesting in the Caribbean? I don't know if you've noticed, but Jamaican people like me were all like all about politics. Mm -hmm. So in Jamaica. Like we, I remember sitting at my father's feet and just being like this, Jamaica, everybody talks about politics. Everybody talks about it. <laughs> and so you end up getting rounded just like you did uh -huh. where it's fascinating to you because it was part of your happy mm. childhood. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, not too much of that in the United States. I think it's part of why I'm so interested. Well, I'm interested in communities that really are involved in the community, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And my, I viewed my life's work to get people more involved. Yeah, which you have, which you have. I yeah. think, you know, I also think and we we're talking about the future being female. And this mm. is I, a friend of mine told me on Saturday, you know, this is the year of the woman. And I'm like, really? It is. So I do think <laughs> it's the year of the woman. And but I look back, even though it's a year of the woman, you were elected in 2020 in the middle of a pandemic. And, you know, I don't do any business with Miami-Dade County. So this had nothing to do with business. I I'm just so impressed with how you have moved things along. And it's almost like a precursor for the presidential election <laughs> because it's what women do. Mm. I'm just, I want to be like, I'm trying to help you. Like, I want us to win to get, you know what I mean? Yes, I feel like yes. women are like that. Like, we want you to win men. We want you to win everyone. Just work with us. And I yeah. feel like you got people to see mm. that you could be a a. a a mayor, you could be a tough woman, you could be a compassionate woman, you could be a legislator yeah. that gets stuff done. Uh -huh. And I watch it. You know, I have all my friends work at Miami Dade County and all that, and I watch it and I see. Huh. And um and I just I appreciate the efficiency. Uh, thank you. Your chairman said um something one day, he said, Government at the speed of business. Genius. Yes. Yes, so, yes, for sure, for yeah. sure. Well, you know, we want people to participate, mm -hmm. not just in civic life, but mm -hmm. to benefit from our growing economy. I often talk about the rising tide lifting all boats. Absolutely. That is my chief motivator with the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we want the economy to do well, and we want everyone to do well mm -hmm. in the Absolutely. economy. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's um, I think that's exactly why you are so well loved. So, <laughs> your team, your very fabulous team, yeah. Claire, and all of them, they sent me this greatest hit, <laughs> which I love. And I know that because um, you've done a lot. I know that because I've seen you mm. at many. Uh, you know, our company handles the Urban League and um, New Urban Development. So we just recently saw each other at the Superior Manor Phase yes. Two opening in Liberty City. Yes, and so. You know, tell me about housing. Like housing is just oh, out of this sight. Is ground yeah, zero for it is. Well, that's what our former HUD secretary said that we were at the epicenter of the housing crisis, and for sure we are. And therefore, we have to do even more, which we are. Mm -hmm. But it's just not enough. So, housing has always been a challenge here. And then in the pandemic, things kind of stabilized. People. Uh, we're out of work and housing prices were not going up because nobody was clamoring for mm -hmm. the housing. And um, then we got discovered and all the people that came down here with their money drove up the housing prices. Oh my God. So they were all like, they're here. I want to go like, why is the highway? Like aren't I'm on the highway now on 95 and I'm like, oh my God, there must be an accident. And then I get to the Golden Glades <laughs> and I realize it's not an accident. It's just yeah. too many people. You know, it's an interesting phenomenon about the traffic, not to get off housing too, for no, too long. It's but, all very important. but the it's traffic all situation, we don't have that large an additional population. We really not continue. Florida is, but mm -hmm. not so much Miami Dade. So people are leaving because mm -hmm. they can't afford it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And they're coming in and jacking up the prices. prices. But I guess maybe the people, first of all, we have a lot of visitors. 
We have, oh, a, yeah, lot so, yeah, a lot of visitors. And then maybe the people who are here are driving around more, more places to go. I don't know, but it is really, really bad. And bad. the answer is transit, and we could talk about that. But actually, our housing costs, which are among the highest in the country, mm -hmm. we're considered perhaps the least affordable place in the country when you look at our salaries, they factor not just the housing, but the transportation costs too. Because if you live further away, now you're spending more money to of get course, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, housing plus transportation, very, very difficult to live here. And people can't afford to buy because the median home value has gone yeah, up I mean, so much. It's crazy. And the rental prices have doubled or more in some cases. So we have been solving housing by building mm -hmm. more, yes. so to increase the supply. Yeah. And we're succeeding in that, uh, tens of thousands of new units. But it's not keeping pace with the demand, but it is reducing the competition and prices Got have it. stabilized. Like stabilized. I, I read yes. something in the Herald about it. Yeah, it's starting to stabilize. At yes. least people can yeah. get their bearings. At least they can. Yes, yeah. I think that's that's fair. But we also have to prevent evictions, which we've done with an eviction diversion mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. We created the first Office of Housing Advocacy mm -hmm. to help people navigate, which thousands of people need our help. Mm -hmm. And uh, another great thing we did is call the Special Assessment Loan Fund. So in condominiums, and I was over on Miami Beach at my campaign office on Miami Beach, and there were a bunch of volunteers with me yesterday, and three people came up to me independently in the group and said they had received these loans, and it was oh, a, wow. a godsend for them. Wow. So the, the way this works is you get the special assessment. You don't have the savings. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to leave. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, special assessment will kick you right out. Right. So we said we can give up to $50,000 really? for 40 years, zero interest. What? For yes. a special, that's a lot. Yes. So one lady had that's a $75,000 special assessment, but she could figure out how to get how to the get 25. The she couldn't get the 50. Another, I don't remember. So each of them yeah. had that this was their lifeline. And that's exactly what we need. We need mm -hmm. to keep people there. Uh, we, we don't want people leaving. We yeah. want them to be able to afford it. And we need to fix these properties. So, you know, I know they need to be safe. I know a lot of condominiums are coming up on that 40-year right now. Correct. correct. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we're going to have to look at that in a bigger way because we can't afford to have these mm -mm. buildings be vacated or re, you know, knocked down and build yeah, no, luxury I mean, or something like that. Housing. We also have, an, and just for your listeners who might know of someone or themselves for landlords for multi-tenant smaller buildings typically we can give them a grant not a loan to renovate if they keep it affordable for 30 years no way. so that is a great program it's called NOAA Noah. like the R. all right Noah. n-o-a-h <laughs> yes which stands for naturally occurring affordable housing nice so i have spoken to a number of small business people mm -hmm. a lot of women mm -hmm. a lot of women of color mm -hmm. who are in yes, that real estate market yes. yes we did we, we did and Harry. some of those folks are taking advantage of this program oh good 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 yeah. good listen you know, I love smart, smart, I love smart women. I love the fact yeah. that we're able to do that. And, yeah. you know, Terry from One United Bank always talks about the, the down payment assistance program. Yeah. And maybe that kind of has that. Mm -hmm. We had somebody buy a house with $70,000 down payment assistance. Wow. That's a lot of money. So, I mean, yes. I know that there's yes. these programs in and around Miami yeah. County. You're yeah. really trying to help people get Yeah, but unfortunately, the house price is still so high. Mm -hmm. But yes, and we want to do more. And we are partnering with MD. MD, my buildings. Miami Deed <laughs> Economic Advocacy Trust, mm -hmm. which also works on home buyer assistance oh, and yeah. so on. She's so we have to cobble all these things together uh, to, to help people uh, get in the front yeah. door. So what, okay, so, so what else... What else can we look forward to for you for four more years? Why should I? Well, I'm going to vote for you regardless. <laughs> but why should I vote for you? Yeah. Well, we've made great progress. Certainly public safety is number one. Mm -hmm. And we are also considered one of the safest metropolitan areas in the country. We've reduced violent crime dramatically. We are solving crimes dramatically. We have great neighborhood policing. 
Um, we have our Peace and Prosperity Prevention Program. We got 1,500 kids since I'm in office in summer and school time jobs, paid living wage, and oh, getting wraparound summer services. Summer Youth Employment Program. Also Summer Youth Employment, which we do together with the school system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Peace and Prosperity is a little different because it targets kids that are at risk of going the wrong way. Oh, it's like an intervention. It is. Like it's an intervention. early intervention program. Which yeah. They're just so important if because a yeah. lot of people, you could stop it. You know what I mean? You can arrest that and development totally. from going. And you know who taught me about that was my dad. Mm -hmm. When my dad worked in the city of New York, he actually told me that they were hiring gang members. Oh, wow. Which is scary. But if you can get them at the right, you know what I mean? If you just. No, of course. You give them something different to yeah. do. Uh, like all that. This yeah. is all like. All, like Opportunity. Oh, like you're giving all the opportunity. Brain power that you're using yeah. for to be a gang member or whatever. Yeah. You could yeah. be using that same yeah. brain power. Yeah. Well, and we're also building relations with law enforcement that is not con adversarial. Confrontational, yeah. Yes. So that's a, a really good thing. So we're going to keep doing those things. Obviously, there'll be a sheriff because now, oh, yeah. constitutional officer, we're going to have a sheriff. Yes. Uh, but we need a sheriff that will work with the county on these kinds of uh, collaborative programs. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have uh, uh, supported someone. <laughs> So James Reyes is James my Reyes, I'm so James sorry. Reyes is my uh, well because he's he's battle uh, proven. He's battle tested, yeah. Yeah, he ran the jails that were under federal oversight for mm -hmm. ten years, and now we're the most recovered in the nation and a safe jail where the the staff and the inmates are safe. It's really quite something. It's very. Listen, I you know I've had friends and family that have spent a long, long time mm. in in prison and jail is hell. So, I mean, if you can, yeah, if you can make that a little bit better for those yes. people. Well, and we focus you know. now on reentry in a way that we have not before. We have mm -hmm. reentry plans, reentry um, partnerships. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work hard on the reducing recidivism, which, by the way, for our young people, we also have the best juvenile justice program in the country. Oh, wow. I, we have very low recidivism. We wrap around services, bring in the family. Mm -hmm. Our kids, really, we, we, you know, when they come to our attention, we do well with them. You do well. Well, yeah. you know what, this, uh, this whole, like, 360 approach that yes. you seem to be, that's how I feel as a resident and a voter, mm -hmm. is that I feel like you have managed to cover a lot of different bases, like we talked about. <laughs> yes, yeah. That have yeah. that are divergent, actually, but they are. Commonly yeah. Well, that you know. County. Thank you so much for saying that, and that is kind of what I learned over time that you mm -hmm. have to approach everything holistically. Holistically. And a and so it's even in our prevention program. We have money that goes into neighborhoods for crime prevention oh, projects nice. that the neighborhoods can come up with themselves. They can come up their their own solution. Yes, and then you'll fund yes, it. exactly. Wow. So just to flip to another topic, the environment. Mm -hmm. We, uh, I've been very active. I, I'm known as the water warrior. I <laughs> need to protect our our clean water, uh, our bay, which is our economic driver here. Uh, Sixty four billion dollar impact, uh, Biscayne Bay, and we know it's had its challenges, fish yeah, kills, I live on and Biscayne bay. so you know what I'm talking yeah. about. So uh, obviously we've done a good bit in my time, but we need to do more. We're working to prevent storm surge. We're working to uh, be carbon neutral, mm -hmm. uh, to re to go electric, to go solar, to plant trees that will cool. You know, we we are. Do you uh, know how much brain power it has to take for you to remember all this stuff? Yeah. Like, I'm like, <laughs> going from housing, children, yeah. da, 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 all the way. Like, it's yeah. so much. Well, as a child at about age 12, I was kind of a depressed little girl. Mm -hmm. Age 12, you know, That's coming into puberty. And I was like, I pledged I'm never going to be bored again. Mm -hmm. And I have never been bored. So <laughs> as mayor, I get to, yes, it's incredible, the yeah. diversity of things. You get to multitask. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You get to multitask. <laughs> you get to multitask. Definitely. So let's see. We've got safety. We've got housing. We've got, we did See talk a lot about traffic and transit, about. so yes. it's time to wrap up, but I'm addressing it. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> what we do know is that you've done an awesome job for the last four years, mm. and the election is Tuesday, August 20th. Yes, and early voting until the 18th. And 80, early voting until that Sunday, uh, yeah. is it Souls to the Polls? 
Yes, Sunday yeah. should be souls to the polls. By gosh, yes. we want everybody, to, all the souls to come, exactly. and especially from Sunday church, the come. <laughs> that, leave church and go to the polls. That's right. Souls to the polls. So, and then the election is August 20th. And um, yeah, and then I look forward to having you as my mayor again. Thank you. Thank so you. I'm really hopeful that if people really do show up, and it's always low turnout, which I hope people are really jazzed and turned on about this presidential I opportunity. Thinking, you know, Kamala has really changed the game. She has She's changed really the game. Go like, yes. Oh, Wait a minute. Wait. Do you know, like, door to door has gone up 21%? I was just listening to a great story in Wisconsin. They just they can't uh, deal with all the volunteers, all the excitement. Oh my God, <laughs> so listen, great. and it's also in rural America. Yes, it, this was rural. And it's, you know, the, <laughs> did you see her roll up in her Air Force Two in Detroit? The crowd. In the airport hangar? In the crowd. With it was Beyonce in, it was. It was crazy. Listen, it's yeah. gone way, it's way beyond yeah. her. It's like, just thank you so much for giving us an option as I feel like everybody's <laughs> just jumping on it. So I'm looking forward to electing you. I'm looking forward to electing, re-electing you four more years and to elect uh, the first female president of the United States. Black girl magic. Girl <laughs> magic. The future's female. Thank you so much. Thank you, Suzanne. It's been great.